Azərbaycanın Azərbaycanın Şuşa zirvəsində Türk zirvəsinə baxış baxanda görürük ki Prezident İlham Əliyevi uzaq güvənli kim olduğunca çox diyadlarına baxıcıbağında əsasını qoyulmasını təmin və təşkil etdiyi bir proses gəlib paralara çıxıb artıq Türk dövlətləri təşkilatı regional amil olmaqla bərabər qabaq amilə çevrilmək Düşünün, Türk dövlətləri təşkilatına düz olan Avrupa Türk ölkəsinin hələ müşahidəçiləri getirir. Ərazisi 4,7 milyon kvadrat kilometri. Türk Avrupanın ərazisindən böyük. Cəm Avrupanın ərazisi 4 milyon kvadrat. Bizim patrincalımız var. Bütün təbii ehtiyatlar, bütün sərvətlər, əhali demografik artımdakı dinamika hamı sonu göstərir ki, Türk dövlətləri təşkilatı yaxın gələcəyin qlobal amili olacaqdır. Bax, yanı başımızda bir proses də başlıyor. Türk prosesi, bir anda Türk amili bir Azərbaycanlının İrana prezident seçilməsini təmin etdir. Əvvəllər qadağan idi Türklük propagandası, Türklük danışığı, amma indi o amili Türk kimliyi məsul biz eşliyanın bir türkün İranda prezident seçilməsinə gətirib çıxardır. Bu da Azərbaycan prezidentinin həm əvvəldə, həm də özünün son andışmə mərasimində dediyi o fikirləri həm bizim ailəmiz tutmaq, həm də bəlkə də bilmək olmaz gələcək İsrab ölkələr tradirlərinin həmi üçün həm dövlətlər təşkilatına müraciət edəcəklərdən o da olmaqdan və Türk dövlətlər təşkilatının hər bir toplantısı Dünyasının inteqrasiyası istiqamətində atılan çox önəmli aldı. Biləsiniz, son min illiklər boyunca türklər həmişə bildikdə savaşmışlar. Bir türk bölümü gəlib, hamısını digərini özünə tabi etdirmiş, bir bayraq saçmış və sonra bunlar davam etməmiş, dağılmış. Tarihdə ilk dəfə türklər bütün görünürlərin həm türkədə meyir var. Dadaqsız, şahıqsız, mühafəzəz, birləşirlər və bu birləşmə nöqtəsi ilk olaraq Naxçıvandan başladı və onlar Zirvəsi bu gün Şuşadan. Azərbaycanın da burada əhəmiyyətini və mərkəzi rolunu qeyd edəmək istəyir. Gözləntilərimiz olduqca böyükdür. Azərbaycan çox böyük bir yol başlayıbdır. Və Türkiyə prezident Recep Tayyip Erdoğan da bir yerdir. Qazaxıstan prezidenti, Qırqızıstan, Özbəkistan prezidenti ilə bir yerdir. Azərbaycan prezidenti buraya Türkmənistan da əlavə etmək olar. Klasik anlamda Turan aryalında yeni bir oluşum yaradıblar və bu oluşumun iqtisadi bazasını yaradıblar artıq, ekonomik bazasını. Bu oluşumun hərbi bazasını yaradıblar. Yəni, müttəfiqlik prosesi ki, 21-ci ildə Şuşada Türkiyə və Azərbaycan arasında imzalandı. O prosesin hərfini və xəddini inkişaf etdirərək Türk dünyası aryalına yayma kursunu da müşahidə etmək. Sonunda bu dövlətlərin hamısı ilə eyni ilə biz o müttəfiqlik müqabiləsini imzalayacaq. Hamısı ilə yaxınaq ikili münasibətlərimiz ən üst səviyyədədir, ən yaxın Türkiyə iləyik, amma indi ən yaxın onların hamısı ilə olacaq. Bugün Türkiyə və Azərbaycan mərkəzli bir nəhək bir qabal dünya prosesinin şahidi olubdur. qoruyucu və qurucu imkanlarını özünə qaytarmaq istiqafətində də böyük gələcəyin bizi gözlədiyinə inanıram. İranda daxil olmaqla bu bölgə Türk adiyyəndir. Artıq İranda adi dini dini Türk, silahlı qüvvələrin komandanı Məhəmməd Bakiri Türk, adi icra hakimiyyəti Türk. Artıq İranın da belə Türk dövlətlər təşkilatına üzv olma perspektivi açılır. Yəni, İran belə görür ki, yol, xət bu birlikdə, bu blokda, bütün bloklardan, bütün embargolardan çıxma yolu da qıq mümkün yaşadı İran üçün yenə də bu istiqamətdə. Mən inanıram ki, Azərbaycan dövlətinin bakçısı, prezidentləri,
Prezident İlham Əliyev de demeli dəvətini edib təbrik ə, məktubunda İran Prezidenti inanıram ki, birinci olmasa da ikinci sırada Azərbaycana səfər edəcəkdir və bizim demokrasiyamız da İran da qoşulacaqdır və bu qoşulmalıdır. Ki, bir dövləti, Macaristan bir dövləti adı müşahidəçi ismində qoşulmaqdadır və işləfəli bunlar da Şuşada iştirak edir. Ormanın gelişinde Gündüz Qazanistan Prezidenti bugün geldi. Şimali Kipir Türk Dövlətinin rəhbəri iki gün öncədən buradadır, xan kendini ziyarət etdi. Yəni bildiyimiz İlham Əliyevin Azərbaycana və Türk dünyasına kazandırdığı o müqəddəs əraziləri, o şəhidlərin qanı ilə doldurmuş və zəfərə çatdırmış o əraziləri ilə Türk Dövlətlərinin rəhbərləri gezməkdə, burada futbolar çektirməkdə, tarifə, gelediyə ismarışlar, mesajlar verməkdə. Mən e, eminim ki, İsmail Bey Qasbralı'dan tutmuş, bu türklü uğrunda şehit olan, ezilen, yaşayan, yaradan bütün benim hayalperest e, Türk kardeşlerimin ruhu şaddır. Esirler de onlar hayal etdi İlham Əliyev ve Erdoğan onu bir çeyecek. Keçen esirin ortalarında Türklüğe göre Türkiye'nin özünde Türkler istismara ve cezaya mevcut. Hep skandalara atılır. Türklük propagandası aparmak İsmet Bin Önlü'nün zamanında yasak. O cümleden SSR arazisinde ve indiki Türk şükürlükler teşkilatına ait olan ülkelerin arazisinde pandemi damgası ile ne kadar ziyalı müdürler. Bak Hüseyin Cabit'ten tutmuş ta bizi Orta Doğu'ya kadar her yeri bak o Türkçülerin, Türk aydınlarının ruhu bugün şartlıdır. Dört yıl bundan evvel bu sahneni tesebür belirlemek mümkün değildi ki. Paşinyanın yenice yavru gedib, iravana gittiği, oradan toz dövüşlerine hazırlaştığı bir mekanda cemi dört yıl sonra Türk dünyası zirve toplantısını geçirecek. Why should the EU grant Ukraine fast track accession? It is a solid signal to Putin's regime that Ukraine will now be in Russia's sphere of influence. It is a new chance for the EU to reaffirm its leadership in promoting peace in Europe. It is a strong acknowledgement that Ukrainians who are dying for freedom and democracy are Europeans. Nearly 90% of Ukrainians want to join the EU. Over 60% of Germans and Italians support Ukraine's membership of the EU. Ukraine has already fulfilled over two-thirds of its obligations under the EU-Ukraine Association Agreement, including significant democratic and market transformations. Ukraine is a reliable partner. In 2021, Ukraine supported 93% of the EU's statements on international affairs. Integration is already taking place. Even during the military aggression, Ukraine managed to integrate its energy system into the NSOE after the first test. Ukraine has one of the most powerful armies in Europe. Support for reconstruction of Ukraine in the EU will offer huge opportunities for European businesses. Ukraine is a large-scale consumer market for the EU goods. Extraordinary times require extraordinary decisions. The Ukrainian people are fighting for European values. They deserve to be in the EU. Kelly, you know, it appears to me that Ukraine uh, is a de facto uh, member of NATO already. Uh, NATO is currently supplying uh, weapons, ammunition, and training. Uh, in fact, NATO has been providing training to Ukraine since the late 1990s. Uh, I was there almost 20 years ago, back in 2005, on a 22 NATO nation uh, training uh, session with the Ukrainians. So um, the uh, and in 2008, NATO agreed to uh, provide uh, membership to Ukraine, but they didn't provide a timeline. 
Uh, and it's interesting, the NATO Secretary General just recently stated once again that all of the NATO members agree that UK, Ukraine will become a member of the alliance, just didn't give a timeline for it. Uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, Lithuanian foreign minister stated that Ukraine has had two invasions uh, since uh, in the last 14 years since uh, NATO promised to let them in. So uh, the, the nations that, that directly border uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine, the Baltics, Poland, are far more anxious for Ukraine to become a member of NATO than is uh, the U.S. or Germany. Uh, that's because those nations have, have long suffered from the, uh, the dominance of, of uh, Russia and, and formerly the Soviet Union. Well, that's a great point, and I think that's an interesting perspective. So would Ukraine joining NATO mean anything different for Americans? Well, you know, I think that's one of the main reasons that the U.S. has got its current policy, and that is that we're providing weapons and economic aid for Ukraine, uh, but we're slow rolling the NATO membership. Uh, the NATO treaty says that an attack on one is an attack on all. In, in the Ukraine, of course, has been attacked by Russia. So Ukrainian membership would mean U.S. security uh, guarantees, which means U.S. troops. So I don't think it's very likely that, the, that, that we uh, would approve uh, NATO membership uh, as long as the war is ongoing. And, uh, and that's pretty much Germany's position. So with the U.S. and Germany aligned there, uh, that, that's going to continue to be slow roll until this war comes to Earlier this week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged Sweden to join the alliance. And back in April, Finland became a member. So what are the benefits to strengthen NATO? Well, I, I think the uh, benefits to strengthening NATO, you know, we as a nation have, have fought every war since World War One with uh, allies. And uh, in, in alliances in, in, in today's world, really the only way that you could uh, successfully uh, conclude any major so uh, those, uh, and as long as there's, you know, peace in Europe, there, there's peace uh, worldwide in that there's not a world war going on. There are lots of little brush fire wars, but, but not a, a major war. So uh, we absolutely want to ensure uh, peace in, in Europe. We want to see that Europe maintains a, a strong and vibrant democracies uh, that they have developed since World War II and certainly have been allied, allied with us in, in, in many of our expeditions. Again, to your point, it's a bit concerning to suggest, but is there a risk of World War III with Putin if Ukraine is admitted? Well, you know, I, I'm sure that Putin and the Russian ultranationalists are going to view this as uh, an existential threat uh, because, of the, as you pointed out, it puts uh, NATO uh, directly on, on Russia's border. Um, but we've already seen uh, an increase in Russia's border with NATO uh, with the admission of Finland. Uh, you know, I think had Putin successfully conquered Ukraine, that would have put us in a much closer uh, position to World War III than admitting NATO. Uh, a successful invasion by, by Putin would have emboldened him, and, and he would have viewed NATO and the U.S. as a paper tiger, uh, which would have encouraged further aggression on his part. You know, now that we've seen all these exposed weaknesses of, of the Russian military, I don't think that Putin or uh, the Russian general staff particularly anxious to start World War III. And of course, the use of nuclear weapons would, uh, would result in mutually assured destruction. So that's not a weapon system that's lightly used. All in all, uh, the, this unwarranted aggression by Putin uh, has been a strategic disaster for him and for Russia. Uh, and I think he realizes that any further aggression uh, would simply compound the disaster. That makes sense. Retired Major General William Inyard, thank you as always for joining us. Pleasure to be with you today, Kelly. with me, Henry Keane, as usual, doing my best.
all EU member states the same. Once Ukraine completes the Economic, social, and Applies for EU. will be rigorous. of hardship. Praise days and effective. Trump gets back into White House. and for the world. Wind 
to approach it. Well, I have way out. despite making that pledge. as an escalation. of course knows the story to quote Politico again as the of the FSB, which specializes in helping within Russia and the that the Russian army would not encounter a serious resistance. Service for protecting the constitutional order and fighting terrorists. There is not much to discuss in the country. All I can see here, there will be more Russian generals falling. We even expect. That's it for today. Thank you so very much for watching. Stay Valentin Zelensky came to Brussels 
take part in the meeting of the European Council. All the leaders of Europe are united in confirming the irreversibility of Ukrainian European course, wrote the President of Ukraine this morning social media. Zelensky met with the leaders of the EU and member states and held bilateral negotiations. Also, Ukraine signed three security agreements at once, one of which is with the European Union as a whole structure. It will, for the first time, establish the commitment of all 27 member states to provide Ukraine with broad support despite any internal institutional changes. Every step is for the sake of getting closer to a historical goal, peace and prosperity in common European home. Also, the next summit of the European Council is held in Brussels. Thank you very much for this support and for this outcome. Opening negotiations is very important for all, for all of us, for all Ukraine. Uh, and of course, we have to work on next steps. You always say that we are too quick, but we need. <laughs> um, uh, so we, we will discuss today with the leaders, with leaders about it, our next steps, and of course, uh, the divergent things. Air defense, that is one. Of course, all the packages, thanks to all the partners. What we had signed it or accepted, but we need them urgently on the battlefield. This historic agreement was signed by Ukrainian president and the president of the European Council, Charles Michel. As of late May, Ukraine had signed security deals that committed more than 23 billion and financial support according to the office of the president of Ukraine. The official application for accession to the EU was submitted by Ukraine on February 28, 2022, the fifth day of the full-scale war with The start of negotiations happened when two years passed. Obviously, there is an even longer road ahead. Now, Kiev and Brussels have to negotiate 35 chapters from agriculture and education to current politics and human rights harmonizing Ukrainian legislation with pan-European rules. At the same time, progress will require not only reforms from the Ukrainian side, but also the agreement with all EU member states like Hungary. But you know, if you ask me, Ukraine should not be paying too much attention to Orbans and other Russia lovers. We just need to concentrate on what is of utter importance, negotiating all 35 steps up the stairs to the then, if we are there, at the doorsteps of European family, we talk with Hungary. And who knows what tomorrow brings. The United States Department of Defense spokesman Pat Wright responded to the potential of sending North Korean soldiers to Ukraine to aid the Russian occupation of forces in response to the Kremlin's persecution. Such options were voiced in the media regarding the strengthening of military relations between Moscow and Pyongyang. The speaker to the Pentagon voiced the idea that different Korean troops, which have been trained to Russian prisons in Ukraine, will soon become cannon fodder. It appears that the high-ranked American official, having discussed with journalists in the context, the people of the Russian Federation could potentially ask the North Korea to lend its troops to assist its efforts in the war against Ukraine. If I had been a member of the military command of Northern Korea, I would have dubbed it my choice to direct my forces to become a cannon fodder in the criminal war against Ukraine. Patrick Ryder, U.S. Department of Defense Press Secretary. Well, Mr. Ryder, sir, if you had been a member of the military command of North Korea, you would not care about how many million become a cannon fodder. In fact, you would have thought the more, the better. Less than now. That is exactly what the educated, sophisticated, democratic, and sometimes dangerously naive collective West have to understand in the first place. No dictator cares about life of its people, as there are no people for the said dictator, but a commodity, gladly traded for the chance to strike a pose of global war. When did Kim Jong Un ever even thought to seriously oppose West military? Together with Putin, he can try. Do you really think you will miss a chance? And do you think Putin will miss a chance to kill a couple of million of Koreans instead of tightening, becoming largely unpopular, Kremlin mobilization nuts? I'm not sure, but this is exactly what I'm here for to doubt things that are seemingly undoubted. On June 20th, during a visit to North Korea, Russian dictator Putin and North Korea leader Kim Jong un signed an agreement on a comprehensive strategic partnership. It provides for, I call, immediate
provision of mutual assistance in case of aggression against one of the countries. Already within the framework of the trip to Vietnam, Putin stated that he could not rule out the provision of high precision weapons to North Korea. Only in response to the military aid of the Western countries to Ukraine. The dictator is also considering the possibility of changing the nuclear doctrine of the Russian Federation in response also to discussions in the West about lowering the threshold of the use of nuclear weapons and the development of less powerful weapons. In addition, the Russian dictator also said that it would be, I quote, a very big mistake on the part of South Korea to provide lethal weapons to Ukraine. Perfect. And I mean it is perfect. South Korea should do just what the rest of the civilized world can. Listen to what Putin said. Exactly. Poland, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia called on the European Union to build a defense line along the border with Russia and Belarus, the lesser of the leaders of the four countries as per Reuters states. Now, the authors of the letter note that the line of defense is necessary to protect the EU from military threats and other harmful actions by the Russian government. In the letter to discussed at the summit in Brussels on Thursday, the leaders of the four countries that share borders Russia and Belarus, by the way, said the project aimed at protecting the European Union will also need financial support from all its members, obviously. The creation of a defense infrastructure system along the external border, new with Russia and Belarus, will satisfy the acute and urgent need to protect the EU from military and hybrid threats in the United States. As a Latvian myself, I already see those lemon faces of Russian minded Soviets still loving Putin but for some reason living in Baltic states and in my native European land. Oh my Soviet God, these people say. Spending money on arms and border safety, while Russia, if would ever want it, would have already been here and annexed all Baltics and Poland. Ha <laughs> ha, again, ha <laughs> ha. You see, that is what is most disgusting about the Soviet left. They are proud. They're proud of their human rights oppressor Soviet Empire that once has an next Baltic state. They are proud to be walking dead, a living anachronism, a citizens of a country that does not even exist, but proud to be Soviets comfortably living in a European country. And they immediately refer to European democratic laws and international democratic practices. As soon as they feel somewhat oppressed or deprived of their human rights today, immediately forget that there were no human rights in their beloved Soviet Union. Their arrogance is unbelievable. They simply ignore all threats from the Kremlin because it is actually no threat to them. They welcome Russia as a Soviet Union hire to occupy Baltics again. Ha ha ha. Steal these hybrid threats from Russia exist. I'm talking about a combination of military and non-military, as well as covered and overt means, including disinformation, cyber attacks, economic pressure, smuggling of migrants across the border. You know, surely it would be fun. The scale and cost of this joint project required targeted actions by the EU for its political and financial security in the United States. Some EU diplomats estimate the cost of building such a defense line along the EU 700 kilometers of border with Russia and Belarus at around 2.5 billion euros, which is next to not too much for joint Europe, to be frank. It is necessary to take extraordinary measures as the external border of the EU must be protected by military and civilian needs. The latter of the leaders of the It is also stated that the planning and construction of the defense line on the eastern border of the EU should be carried out in coordination with NATO and its military requirements. Obviously. Recently, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland, Vladislav Sikorsky, made it clear that Warsaw could completely close the border of Belarus. That was it for today for news and updates on Ukraine. Stay with Ukrainian media. Us, great in English, is going to bring you harvest of truth news and terms for you no matter what. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Your voice matters indeed. It helps our voice, Ukrainian news, to be heard globally. Stay safe and for more and stand for Ukraine just as we stand for Ukraine.